tutorials for one of the more difficult parts of the miniature train, the cow catcher. We're going to start off with a sketch on this XZ plane here. And from that top view, we're going to go ahead and start drawing some geometry. So we're going to start at the origin, and we're going to be using a loft in this model. So we're going to actually have to draw a shape of the bottom of the cow catcher and a shape of the top. So this bottom part is 1.8 inches across and then we're going to come up here 0.25 based on how to on reading the drawing and it's going to come to a point the midpoint there and it'll come back over here and then connect down we'll add some dimensions here to make sure we're on it just right 0.25 and the distance from that point to the base here is going to be one inch. There's one dimension left and I always like to check my dimensions by clicking on points and lines and moving them around. So if I can move it side to side that tells me I need a dimension that goes side to side. And this point is centered on this line and if the line is 1.8 then it should be 0.9. We'll finish the sketch. It's fully constrained but now we need to create a second work plane a sketch on a offset plane. So I'm going to pull this sketch plane up. So I'm going to click and drag with this create 2D sketch tool. And as I click and drag, I can specify the offset distance. And the drawing says it's 0.75 away. And so now we're on this sketch plane. And we're going to project some of the geometry of this shape below. And as we do that, I just want to show you again what is happening. You're bringing the geometry from a sketch plane below onto this sketch plane above. It's hard to see in 2D, but that's what we're doing. And now we're going to draw over top of this the smaller shape. It's not a perfect offset, so we can't use the offset tool. I've tried that before, and that doesn't work. But there are some common things that we can use. And I'm just sketching this with looks right now and I missed a line over here so I'm going to add that over and then I'm going to go back and dimension it. This height is just like the other one 0.25 and I got it just right this one is also 0.25 but this point up here is a little bit smaller it's going to be 0.75 and it is also centered from itself and I already got that there, so I'm good to go. I'm just going to double check. I still have two dimensions left. And uh, I guess I can move this thing side to side. So let's double check this distance right here. If uh, all the way across is one inch, excuse me, 1.8 inches, we're going to take away what this edge should be, which is going to be 1.2 inches, but we have to divide it by two. Uh, it's a difficult equation probably if you're not used to doing it, but this side is going to have half of it, and this is going to have half of what's left over of that. So that's your equation. Okay, And we still have one dimension left, so I'm going to click on that point, move it around, click on another point, and I don't see... Oh, there it is. got to center this one as well, so I will go ahead and do that. And this time I know the distance, it's 0.3. So I can just go ahead and type in 0.3. Okay, my two shapes are set, fully constrained. I'll finish this sketch and I will do a loft. A loft takes one shape and creates this, uh, it's like an extrusion, but it goes from one shape to another shape with a nice smooth transition between. And I just simply clicked on the sketches and if it's only one shape on the sketch, it selects it automatically. And then over here, my second sketch, I had to specify by clicking on the specific shape because I did project that other geometry. So now that I've got them both selected, I can choose OK. And there's my loft. I'm going to hide this work plane. And one thing I've learned is to do the shell first. So the shell tool removes the inside of this part but leaves a wall thickness. So it's kind of like scooping out the insides. We're going to remove the face on the bottom, and we can tell that from the drawing. And the wall thickness we're leaving is 0.1. Again, we get that from the drawing. I'll say OK. So that's all hollowed out, just like we wanted. 
Next thing to do is to put these little indents on the front of it. And this is where we can use this offset tool, which I really think is pretty cool. This shape is offset and we can specify the distance by dimensioning it. And from the drawing it is 0.1. We'll finish that sketch and go ahead and extrude it. And reading the drawing, it says extrude it as a cut into it. And the wall thickness is 0.1, so we've got to go less than that, 0 0.05. And that is specified in the drawing. I'll say OK. And we've got one more kind of window to create over here on this side. So we'll create another 2D sketch on that face. Offset this shape again. If you didn't model it right, you won't be able to offset it. So go back and double check that you did it the same way I did. And you should be set. Offset distance again is 0 0.1. Finish that sketch. Go ahead and extrude it again as a cut. Distance 0 0.05. Okay. All right, next thing to do is add the pegs on the back. So let's go ahead and put a sketch plane on this back face. And let's draw our circles that we're going to extrude as pegs. Three circles. Don't worry about their size or location yet. We will add those dimensions next. And the dimensions we can get. Again, it's tough drawing. This is a harder part. Make sure you're reading it correctly. The diameter of these is going to be, just double checking, 0.125. So I'll go ahead and dimension that one. And dimension these other two. Next up, I got to figure where are they located. And there's a lot of dimensions on this drawing. One of the first given is the distance between them here that I saw, and that distance is 1.25. And then there's an edge location right to that corner point, one of them, and that is located over 0.275. And then we've got height dimensions. The distance between these, excuse me, the distance between this top one and the bottom edge that is significant because otherwise our pegs are going to be off and won't fit in the train. 0.625. We still have three dimensions left. That's probably this distance, the width dimension here. And that's going to be centered on the back of this thing. It was 1.8. And if we divide that by 2, we'll find that is 0.9. Still two dimensions left. Uh, we're missing the height of these guys. Height of these circles from that base up is 0.125. Make sure you add it to the other one. 0.125. Our pegs are fully constrained and ready for extrusions. Finish that sketch, go ahead and choose extrude and you specify which things, which shapes you're gonna extrude by clicking on them and I like to make sure it's going the right direction, and it is. And our extrusion depth we get from our drawing, again, that extrusion depth is gonna be 0.125. Last thing we need to do is chamfer them, so we'll click on the chamfer, specify our chamfer distance first uh, as 0 0.01, it's cut out of 45 degrees, so we're gonna keep that default chamfer style and chamfer these pegs right here. And there you go. There's your finished cow catcher.